In this video, we'll see another example of a fundamental theorem of Markov chains, Markov chain Monte Carlo, and the Metropolis algorithm. The problem that Markov chain Monte Carlo addresses is the problem of sampling. That is, how do we sample from a particular distribution? Just as an example, suppose that we're given a graph G, and we want to choose a uniformly random proper K coloring of G. Here by proper K coloring, I mean a way to color all of the vertices of G so that no two adjacent vertices have the same color. It should not be at all obvious how to do this efficiently. One way to do this, to choose a uniformly random proper K coloring, would be to enumerate all of the proper K colorings and then pick one at random, but that would take a really long time, depending on the graph. Another way you might try to do it is just to choose a completely random coloring, just color all the vertices random colors, and just repeat again and again and again until you get a proper coloring, that is, until you don't color any two adjacent vertices the same color. That will yield the correct distribution, but it might also take a really long time. For example, if G is a clique on n vertices, the expected number of times you have to recolor before you find a proper coloring turns out to be exponential in n if you try to do this. So hopefully this example convinces you that the problem of sampling can sometimes be non-trivial. In this video, we're going to see a way to do this, or at least to approximately do this, called Markov Chain Monte Carlo. The idea of Markov Chain Monte Carlo is the following. First, we're going to construct a Markov chain whose stationary distribution is the distribution that you care about. In the example above, the states of this Markov chain would be proper colorings, and we'd have some probabilistic way of moving from coloring to coloring so that the stationary distribution of this Markov chain is going to be the uniform distribution on all proper colorings. Once we've constructed such a Markov chain, we'll just run it for a while. The fundamental theorem of Markov chains says that, provided the Markov chain that we constructed is aperiodic, irreducible, and has a finite state space, that eventually it's going to converge to this distribution that we care about. Thus, if we run it for a while and just output in this example whatever coloring comes out, that'll at least be pretty close to the uniform distribution, or whatever distribution we cared about in the first place. Let's see an example of how this might go down for proper K colorings. So once again, our goal is given G to output a uniformly random proper K coloring of G, or at least an approximately uniformly random proper coloring. Here's one Markov chain, which has this as a stationary distribution. So here's the Markov chain. Once again, the states are going to be proper K colorings of our graph. And if X sub T minus one is a coloring, we're going to get to the next state X sub T by the following random process. First, we're going to choose a random vertex. Let's say we're at this coloring, so let's just choose this vertex. And then let's color it a random color. Let's say let's color it green. We got lucky. In this case, that turns out to be a legit coloring. It's this one. So in that case, we'll go to that coloring. In this example, that's going to happen with probability 1 12th because there are four vertices I could choose from in three colors, and 1 4th times 1 3rd is 1 12th. However, there's some possibility that we will not get a legit coloring when we do this. So for example, if I choose this vertex randomly to recolor, but then recolor it blue, that's not a legit coloring. In that case, I'll just stay here. So for this particular example, the choices that you'd make coming out of this state uh, look like this. So I claim that this Markov chain is symmetric. That's because, for example, the probability of picking this vertex and then coloring it green is the same as the probability of picking this vertex and then coloring it yellow. It's also aperiodic since it's got self loops. It turns out that this chain is also irreducible, provided that the number of colors k is big enough, in particular if it's greater than or equal to the maximum degree plus 2. Fun exercise, verify that. And yes, I know that in this example that is not the case. k here is 3, and the maximum degree is 2, and k is not greater than or equal to, to 2 plus 2. Uh, but actually, it turns out that for this particular little example, the Markov chain is also irreducible. In any case, as long as this thing is irreducible, we're going to conclude, by the fundamental theorem of Markov chains, that the stationary distribution is uniform. Hooray! Therefore, if I want to sample a uniformly random proper k-coloring, 
one way to do it would be to take a walk on this Markov chain and output the coloring that I get out after a while. Of course, this raises the question, how long do I actually have to walk around on this Markov chain in order to converge, or in order to get approximately close to the stationary distribution? If I have to take exponentially many steps, this isn't really much of a saving. Let's table that discussion for now. We're going to return to it in a later video. Okay, so in the previous example, we figured out how to set up Markov chain Monte Carlo for sampling a uniformly random proper K coloring of a graph. But in some sense, we kind of got lucky. The first Markov chain that we happened to think of happened to give us the stationary distribution that we were interested in. But what happens if we don't get so lucky? That is, what happens if the distribution pi that I care about is not so nice, or if I can't figure out a reasonable Markov chain that has it as a stationary distribution? Here's an example of how this might come up. Okay, to be honest, I'm not going to even pretend that this particular example is very well motivated, but hopefully it illustrates that this can come up fairly naturally. Okay, so here's the example. Given a graph G, suppose I want a proper K coloring of G drawn from a distribution so that a coloring with strictly fewer than K colors is twice as likely as a coloring with exactly K colors. That is, the probability of a particular coloring is going to be 1 over z if it uses k colors, and 2 over z if it uses strictly fewer than k colors, where z here is a normalizing constant. It's just equal to the number of exact k colorings plus 2 times the number of k minus 1 colorings. Again, the question is, how do we sample this? Even computing this constant z seems pretty hard, and the earlier Markov chain that we came up with won't do the trick. It doesn't have the right stationary distribution. So what can we do? Fortunately, there are ways to construct a Markov chain given a desired stationary distribution pi. One of these ways is called the Metropolis algorithm. Here's how it works. Suppose we want to sample according to some distribution pi. And suppose we have some connected graph g. So the vertices of g, v, are the support of the distribution pi that we're interested in. And also, so that it's somewhat computationally easy, given a vertex v of g, to find v's neighbors. Moreover, we want it to be the case that if u and v are neighbors in this graph g, then we can compute the ratio pi of u divided by pi of v. At first glance, this might seem like a kind of funny consideration, but it holds in the, both of the previous two examples that we saw. In the uniform distribution, this ratio is always 1, and the example that we saw before, this ratio is always 1 or 2 or 1 half. In general, this comes up a lot if you're interested in something with some denominator that you can't figure out, but you sort of know the relative probabilities that you're interested in. If all of these things hold, consider the following Markov chain. I'm going to say that the probability of going from state i to state j, so the ijth entry of my transition matrix, is going to be equal to 0 if ij is not an edge in E. It's going to be equal to 1 over d times the minimum between 1 and pi of j divided by pi of i if ij is an edge and i is not equal to j. And otherwise, if i is equal to j, this is just going to be 1 minus the sum over all l not equal to i of pi l. This last entry here is just picking up the slack so that we get a legit probability distribution. Here I haven't said what d is d should just be any constant that's larger than the maximum degree of the graph. So here's a theorem. I claim that this Markov chain is irreducible, aperiodic, and that it has stationary distribution pi. So first, let's note that this is indeed a reasonable Markov chain. At this point, you should pause the video and check that this matrix P that we've defined, I've copied it over here, is in fact a legit transition matrix. OK, cool, now you've checked that. Next, the fact that this Markov chain is irreducible follows from the fact that the graph is connected. And the fact that it's aperiodic follows from the fact that the graph has self-loops. In particular, since we chose the constant d to be bigger than the maximum degree, that means that this case is going to have positive probability on it. 
So there's going to be self loops. Now, the only thing that we need to show is that the distribution pi is in fact the stationary distribution for this Markov chain. To do that, it suffices to show that pi times p is equal to pi. To see this, we're just going to compute pi times p and show that it's equal to pi, but it will be easier to do that if we draw a diagram to keep track of all of these various symbols. So first suppose that here's our state j, and let's break up the neighbors of j into two sets. So one set that I'm going to call n plus j is going to consist of all of the neighbors i of j, so that pi of i is greater than or equal to pi of j. So in here, there might be some state i. The other set that I'm going to call n minus of j, this is going to consist of all of the states L, so that pi of L is less than pi of J. I'm sorry, not all of the states L, but all of the states L that happen to be neighbors of J. And similarly, these are all of the states I that happen to be neighbors of J. Now we can draw in some arrows that represent our transition matrix. So first I have a self loop at J, the weight on this self loop is 1 minus the sum of all r not equal to j of p, j, r. Here I've changed the index variable from l up here to r down here because I just realized that I overloaded l. Sorry about that. We also have an edge in this direction. This is p, j, l. And because we're in the situation that pi of L is less than pi of J, that means that this quantity up here, one is going to be the minimum of these two things, and this is just going to be one over D. So this is one over D. However, going back, this is P of L J, and this is equal to one over D times pi of J divided by pi of L. Similarly here, we have an edge from i to j, this is p i j, and this is just going to be equal to 1 over d. We have one more edge whoop, from j to i, p j i is going to be equal to 1 over d, pi of i divided by pi of j. Okay, I drew this diagram just because it will help us keep track of things when we now compute pi times p because we want to show that it's equal to pi. So let's just compute that. So let's look at the jth entry of pi times p. So pi times p, the jth entry. So this is going to be a big sum, a sum over all of the neighbors of j. And I'm going to break down this sum into a sum over all of the neighbors in n minus j, a sum over all of the neighbors in n plus j, and then j itself. So this is equal to the sum over all L in N minus J of pi of L times PLJ, which is this, 1 over D pi of J divided by pi of L, those pi of L's are going to cancel, sweet, plus the sum over all I in N plus of J pi of I times p of ij, which is 1 over d, plus what we get from this self loop, pi of j times 1 minus the sum over all r not equal to j of pjr. So I'm going to break this sum once again into two parts, the sum over all r in n plus j, and then r in n minus j. So this is the sum over all L in N minus J of PJL. PJL here is just 1 over D minus the sum of all I in N plus J of PJI. PJI is 1 over D times pi of I divided by pi of J.
Now, fortunately, a lot of stuff cancels. So this pi of L cancels with that pi of L. And then this term here actually cancels exactly with this term here, remembering that this whole thing is multiplied by a pi of j. This term here is going to cancel with this term here, once again noting that this pi of j will get canceled by that pi of j. And all that's going to be left is pi of j times 1. So this is just equal to pi of j. Great, that's what we wanted to show. So we just showed that the jth entry of pi times p is equal to the jth entry of pi. Since this worked for any j, we've just concluded that pi times p is equal to pi. And that's what we wanted to show. Let's put a check. To see the Metropolis algorithm in action, let's return to our example of this funky distribution on proper k colorings. Once again, the probability of a particular coloring is 1 over z if it uses exactly k colors, and 2 over z if it uses strictly fewer than k colors, where z is some normalizing constant. I just pasted in the uh, Metropolis algorithm in the upper corner here so we can see it. So our underlying graph is going to be the same. The vertices are going to be all the proper k colorings. And two states, each of which correspond to proper colorings, are going to be connected if you can get from this coloring to this coloring by recoloring just a single vertex. Now we can set up the transition probabilities in this Markov chain using this formula. So for example, if this were a coloring that uses k colors, say this one also uses k colors, but this one uses k minus 1 colors, then the probability of stepping from this coloring to this coloring is going to be 1 over d times the minimum of 1 and 2, which is just 1 over d. Here we're just going to choose d to be anything strictly greater than k times n, where n is the number of vertices in our underlying graph. And the probability that we step back is going to be 1 over 2d. The probability that we go from this state, this coloring, to some other coloring that also has k colors is going to be 1 over d, also the probability that we go back. And we could imagine filling in all of these different probabilities. These transitions are always going to be either 1 over d or 1 over 2d. Then we can just fill in the probability of this self-loop with whatever the leftover probability is at this vertex. Now, how do we take a random walk on this big graph? Well, the straightforward way would be the following. For every state, that is for every coloring, let's compute all of that state's neighbors, that is all of the colorings that differ by the coloring of a single vertex. Then we'll compute these outgoing transition probabilities and sample from that. The theorem that we just proved shows that if we take a walk on this graph for long enough, then eventually it's going to converge to the stationary distribution, which is going to be this weirdo thing. So if for some reason we wanted to sample from this weirdo thing, we could do it by walking for long enough on this graph. Once again, exactly how long we need to walk is a question that we still have not answered. So to recap, in this video we saw Markov Chain Monte Carlo. The basic idea of Markov Chain Monte Carlo is that if you want to sample from some distribution pi, you can try to set up an aperiodic irreducible Markov chain whose stationary distribution is pi. Then, by the fundamental theorem of Markov chains, if you walk for long enough on this Markov chain, eventually you'll converge to that distribution. It's not always obvious how to construct such a Markov chain, but the Metropolis algorithm tells you how to. One question that still remains that has been looming over this entire discussion is, how fast does this Markov chain actually converge to the stationary distribution? If it converges quickly, then this is a good idea. That is, it gives us an efficient way to sample, or approximately sample, from the distribution pi. However, if it takes a really long time to converge, this isn't helping anything. We're going to leave this question unanswered for the time being, and come back to it in a future video. But that's it for now, so thanks for watching!